Good morning, everybody, and welcome to the vlog. I hope the start of your day is amazing. You know, as a zoo owner, one of the things that I get so much enjoyment out of is enrichment for my animals. I'm trying to get my animals to enjoy their life the best that they possibly can. And today, I'm going to actually try something that I've been looking at for Matilda for a long time. You know, we field Matilda. We have her go around. We place food all over the place, so she has to go search for it. But the truth is, is that these guys in the wild will oftentimes eat off of small branches that are in trees, right? And so I've seen on the internet a bunch of times people that have hang stuff from the ceiling that will actually cause them to go up and reach for it and have to do it. And it's great enrichment. Mentally they're thinking, physically they're working and exerting. And that's one of the things I want to do with all my animals here at the zoo. So we're going to start with Matilda and then we'll give you guys some tips that we do here to just kind of keep all of our animals healthy. Because again, a mentally healthy animal is a physically healthy animal and it's going to be a better animal for you to interact with. So what we have here is a little box that you can actually put produce in and hang stuff through. So I'm going to put lettuce through here, kind of close it in here. Then I have some chain here that I can actually hook to the drop ceiling with this hook right here. And the idea is to have it just like maybe this far off the ground, far enough where she can reach up and grab it, but not too close where she's not working for it. So uh, let's just go ahead, hang this up, kind of figure out what's going on and uh, see if it works. It is early in the morning, she's sleeping, but I think she'll get woke up when she knows there's food. So I have it all loaded up and basically this is just gonna go right here and we'll hang this right here like that and then I'll get Matilda. Then I'm gonna just lower Matilda kind of over here so she knows it's there and then you'll just let her kind of do it. Again, this will be really cool because it will move around a little bit which is gonna cause her to work a little bit harder. Not to mention she's gonna be stretching her neck, working out those muscles, stuff like that, pushing her arms up, stuff. so it should be good. So we might have to adjust the size either up or down as we get to going but I think this is something that I've been wanting to do for a long time so I'm pretty excited we finally get a chance to do it. So let's go ahead and get Matilda over and hopefully she'll love it. There you go and guess what we got? all the way up here. Can you reach it? Can you reach it? All the way up here. Up here. Up here. Matilda, up here. All the way up. There you go, girl. There you go. She's finally got it. She's seeing it and she's trying to figure it out. This is so awesome. And look at it, it's kind of moving around so she has to work for it a little bit. This is amazing. This is just what I was going to hope was going to happen. Now I'm going to back up and just let her go to town on this. This is a this is perfect. This is what the enrichment I was hoping I'd do. We might do this once a week or maybe twice a week, something like that. I think it's going to be really good for her. This is awesome. We ended up lowering it just a little bit because it was a little bit too high. So we'll start a little bit lower and then raise it up over the next couple weeks so that she continues to do it. And it's kind of cool because the leopard tortoises are now down getting the scraps. When she pulls them down and they fall down, then the leopard tortoises are down there eating them. So it's kind of cool for everybody. For all you guys out there and you girls out there, you know what's coming. Valentine's Day is coming on the 14th. If you don't have something good, you're gonna be in trouble. I'm telling you, I know from experience. And right now, you can go down in the description. We have customizable four options for you guys. We've got Bella, we've got Salt, we've got Drogo, and we have Ivy. You can customize them, you can send them in an email, you can download them, you can print them up, you can actually get colored ones, or you can get black and white ones if you wanna color them yourself. So it's a great gift, only 
five bucks, four ninety nine. So down in the description, go check it out and get yourself a great Valentine's Day gift. You know, there's different types of enrichment. You know, you can handle an animal with Elvis. We let him wander around. That's his enrichment. And then of course, you want your animal sometimes to be using their brain, kind of like Matilda was with that thing, which worked out really cool. So of course, we've got Beetlejuice here. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to lead him over. I'm going to put this right over here. And see, he, he wants it really bad. He wants it really bad, but you can see he has to go inside the hole to get it, right? So he sees it, he's gotta figure out how to do it. Now in the beginning, it's gonna be easy for him because there's a lot of superworms, but as there's less and less superworms, he's gonna to have to figure out a way to kind of get them over and use that brain of his to get to all those superworms. And so you can see he's going right inside and he's already figured out there's a hole in it, right? I mean, I wanted to have like kind of a plastic where it's translucent, where he can see in it, but now he has to figure it out, right? And this is just kind of mental enrichment and he can actually move it around that way he's using his brain how do I get to the food right you can do the same thing by hiding food in the cave you could put it behind trees and so like that and make them go find it with their nose so uh, again you can see he's going back to it right now and he's like okay see he's, he's kind of nudging the thing around how do I get inside there and then he finds the hole again puts his head in there and gets it that is mental enrichment and it's really important to do that especially with your really smart animals like the monitor lizards now the next step after we do that a couple times is make it even harder, right? Maybe there being only slits in the actual top that he has to get his hand in there and move them around and so on like that. You can do it. I've even seen like monitors with those like little play balls for dogs where you put a dog treat in the middle and this way maybe you put a piece of meat or a rodent or something like that and they have to figure out how to get to it which just can kind of keep them occupied sometimes for hours and uh, again it just keeps their brain thinking and keeps them happy. I mean I'm telling you what a happy animal is a completely different animal. We've talked about it here at the Reptarium that I had animals that used to be kept at BHB that got moved over here into large enclosure with lots of enrichment and they really changed to a completely different animal. No animal was more like that than Ivy. And like I mentioned, Ivy absolutely turned into a different animal. She was being kept down in Atlanta and really a four foot by two foot enclosure. It was still nice. I mean, the guy took really good care of her obviously for like six years. But uh, when we ended up getting her into an eight foot cage, she still was a little bit tricky. You know what I mean? She didn't have the big water feature. She didn't have all all of this enrichment that she could do. And uh, she, I take her out and I never really trusted her as much, but as soon as we got her into here, she turned into a different animal. Now she has the water, she has the waterfall, she has climbing, she has everything she possibly wants. And I tell you what, she turned into this amazing animal that you guys know about, right? I mean, I go in there, she climbs up all over me. She's so curious. I go in the water, she comes right over to me. And that's the thing, it's the, the mental enrichment, giving them everything I want. Now listen, is every animal at the reptarium got what it needs? No, we're working on that. And that's one of the things that we work on every single day to get to the point where every animal has that so they can all reach their maximum potential for coolness right and uh but definitely ivy is unbelievable and you guys know it's all about interaction and enrichment with her you know we've talked about some feeding type of enrichment we've talked about enclosure type enrichment sometimes handling enrichment is what it's all about especially with an animal like an iguana like sriracha right here i mean basically you just have to kind of get them out and get them used to you it's socialization it's exposure therapy for the actual animal and when we actually get sriracha out it's really cool getting it out of the cage it's a little bit crazy but once once it's out, it's actually going to enjoy being out, right? So we have to do that. So listen, it's not easy. Sometimes it's a pain in the butt. Sometimes this little monkey even whips me with its tail and everything like that. But again, you got to just slowly get, don't you hit me. There you go, buddy. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. <sighs> Woo. Getting it out isn't easy. There's no doubt about that. It gives a little fight, but then once it's out, you can see it becomes super chill, you know? Really amazing animal. And we wanna get Sriracha to the point where we can just take it out without that battle, right? Where it just kinda, of, cause it does rip you up a little bit. But once it's actually out, you can see, I mean, it's really super docile. It's super good. And this is kind of the enrichment for this animal. Just like Bella and Diddy and Dixie, they want attention. They wanna be out. They wanna see things. We can walk around with it. It can kinda of see and take in new environments and new visual things and that's what this is going to be about and then eventually this is going to be a great animal to be able to take out for people to pet you know we can do it now just like this you know with it just on my shoulder people can't hold it yet because it's still a little bit squirrely but I tell you what this animal has turned into an amazing ambassador and it's just getting better and better and it's just getting better and better I mean this is, is a prehistoric as it gets even before we were able to handle Sriracha people were always commenting about how amazing it is so it's pretty cool that it's finally getting to 
the point where we want it to be. And I'm telling you, within the next couple months, we won't even have to battle. It'll come right to the front of the cage and come right out. And that's really what I wanted with it. So again, lots of different ways to enrich animals, but it's all about finding the individual animal and what they want, right? You know, and each animal is different. You know, one snake may want this, one monitor may want this. You got to find your own animal and stuff like that. And with Sriracha, I think it's all going to be about interaction and taking it out and just kind of playing with it. It's pretty freaking awesome. And remember, you always want to end these type of things on a calm note. With Sriracha, you can actually put it back like this and oftentimes it'll just allow you to pet it as soon as you put it back in. Remember when I first went to take it out, it was kind of tail whipping, posturing and stuff like that. Now that I've taken it out and spent some time with it, it'll allow me just to pet it without having those types of things happen. So end each training session on a positive note. You never want to end it on a negative note because in their mind, they're going to relate that experience as negative, right? If you end it with a positive note, the next time it's going to be that much easier. Now, mammals like Drogo can be a completely different thing than reptiles. You know, again, I've told that every animal is an individual and every species is completely different too. With Drogo, it's all about new things, right? So I want to rearrange his ropes. I want to rearrange branches. I want to rearrange this area. I want to rearrange everything, maybe every seven to 10 days, because it's funny. He'll like hang out and climb all over this stuff, but he kind of gets used to it. As soon as we rearrange everything, he goes crazy and for hours he's just exploring and finding new things and that keeps him mentally happy, right? The last thing you want is a depressed animal. You don't want your animal to get sad, don't want him to get bored, don't want him to get down because that can be really bad for him and that's something that we definitely don't want here at the zoo. So with Drogo, it's pretty simple. It's literally just about rearranging and redecorating his enclosure every seven to 10 days. When it comes to crocodilians like salt here, calm down girl, a lot of times enrichment can be just, you know, a training thing. Like I always talk about calming down. I talk to her softly, stuff like that. And of course, handling can be enrichment. You know, getting her out of an enclosure can be enrichment, but also training her how to eat can be enrichment too, right? You know, so there's lots of different things you can do with crocodilians. They're very smart animals. So to keep these guys kind of happy is pretty important. Now, the good news is, is that happiness with alligators really comes more from just getting fed and stuff like that. So they don't need as much maybe mental enrichment as some of the other reptiles that we work with. That being said, we want to keep them happy and certainly salt is a big, big thing about keeping tame, right? Because we want people to be able to interact with her, not only now when she's this size, but when she's larger too, you know, when she's six foot, eight foot long. I want to still be able to get in with her and interact. Now, will people be able to hold her like she would do now? I mean, obviously when she's 150, 200 pounds, that's not going to happen. But I still want to be able to interact with her. So again, I'll do all kinds of different things. You guys know that sometimes we'll brush her with a toothbrush. Sometimes we take her out and just kind of let people hold her and stuff like that. We even do the desensitization of her mouth, right? So again, you know, what I'm gonna do is just kind of, again, desensitize those ISOs, those little receptors in her mouth, just so that she doesn't ever snap when somebody is on her. And she seems to actually enjoy it, to be totally honest with you. It's really quite interesting that uh, as soon as I start doing it, typically she calms down a tremendous amount. That's just a good thing for her. So again, really work hard with her because as she gets bigger, she's gonna wanna assert her dominance more on me. We had that problem with RJ, right? He was great for the first you know, four or five years. And then all of a sudden he's like, hey, I'm a big alligator. I'm no longer gonna let you push me around. And you have to be the alpha in that relationship, right? So you've got to always make sure that you win the battle and not them. And then once again, when I'm putting her back, I want her to be calm, right? So I want that last release to be very, very calm. I don't want it to be a wiggle and waggle or anything like that. So we'll go ahead and put her back now very softly. You can see as soon as I open that door, she wants to go, right? She knows she's going back. So now I have to just get her to the point where calm down, calm down, calm down, salt, calm down. Now I'll release her very softly and very gently. And that's how I want to end every session with her. So a lot of ways training and enrichment are kind of go hand in hand, right? Because you're kind of interacting with the animal, causing the animal to think, causing the animal to be happier, right? So when we got Nova, of course, it was not happy and it hated people. And it wasn't long after we started handling it, it became so, so docile. And that is just better for it right now because it can come out. We always talk about that. Nova thinks that we're on display because he watches all the time. He's a people watcher. So he loves coming out and actually adventuring, and it's great to be able to give him that opportunity. Same thing happened with Abasuku, the Black Nile monitor, right? When we got it, it was just so crazy, and then we are able to break that kind of insanity, and now it comes out and can interact and walk around the zoo, and that's really important. So in the end, you know, like I said, I just want to tell you guys that there's a lot of different ways that you can make your animal, your pet snake, your pet reptile happier, and these are just a couple things. I'd like to know in the comments what 
what you do for your animal to see how your animal becomes so happy. Because after all, guys, we love these animals. These aren't just exhibits at my zoo. These are my pets. These are my family. Like I mentioned, I just want my animals to be happy because it makes me happy. I love these things so much. So I hope that you enjoyed this video and I hope that you take something from it that can help you be a better animal keeper, a pet keeper, whatever the case may be. If you enjoyed this video, do me a favor, hit a playlist right over here. Just one or two videos really helps the channel a tremendous amount and I appreciate it. Right here is my podcast channel. I do a lot of in-depth talking about what I just talked about in this video. On this side, you can actually subscribe to this channel, 35,000 subscribers away from 3 million. So hit that subscription button, turn your post notifications on. Have an absolutely wonderful day. Remember, be kind to somebody and I promise I'll see you tomorrow.